Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. I uh, want to thank our New York State Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, for joining us today, and more importantly, for his bold leadership. Um, his leadership is needed now more than ever before. And the reason why we gathered today is because we want to talk a little bit about the immigration enforcement policies that have been changing in our country and the impact that those policies have on our jobs in law enforcement and, and how those changes are impacting what we do, but also um, jeopardizing public safety. And I've had concerns, and I think we've all shared concerns over the last year about how this, these policies, the enforcement policies, will impact us. And unfortunately, I'm here today to tell you that we see that the enforcement policies are having a chilling effect on our ability to keep our communities safe. Now, it doesn't just impact the ability for us to keep our community safe, it also impacts our ability to do our job and to make sure that our court systems and our criminal justice system is ensuring justice on behalf of witnesses and victims in cases and ensuring due process to um, criminal defendants. So I am concerned that what we're hearing from our federal enforcement partners, that the policies that the Trump administration are employing are about focusing on um, enforcement actions against violent criminals who are in this country or illegally. What we're seeing on the ground is that the policies are much broader than that. And we're seeing that ICE is going after witnesses, they're going after victims of crime, and they're uh, going after people who are being charged with low-level offenses. And so that is concerning. Um, we need our court system to be able to protect witnesses and victims of crime who are seeking uh, recourse and justice. Um, you know, very recently, many of you may have heard about the case, and in fact, it was in the papers today, of a man named Willie Hurtado. He was a man who um, witnessed two separate homicides and fully cooperated with the New York City Police Department and the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office in the prosecution of these cases. And I should say that in the first case that he testified, he did so, although there were threats made against him. Um, and I believe that he was not only brave in coming forward, but he, did, he went far beyond what most people would do. Because not only did he witness a homicide, but weeks after the homicide, he saw the perpetrators in the street and he called the police department and he got himself involved. And after doing this, um, testifying bravely in that case, and also cooperating in a second homicide, um, that he did not witness the second homicide, but he saw things that led up to the homicide, uh, we put five killers in prison and he helped protect our communities. And now, um, years later, he is in detention and facing removal. He's married to a U.S. citizen. He has two young children who are United States citizens. And this detention sends the wrong message to witnesses that no matter how hard you try to do the right thing, no matter how brave you are in coming forward to help the district attorney's office and the police department to protect the communities that you live in, that you will still be held in detention and be subject to deportation. I'm sure if you ask the families who lost their loved ones, Willie Hurtado is a hero to them. And I'm calling on his immediately to, for him to be immediately released and given the opportunity to uh, stay here lawfully in the country. He has an application for lawful residency um, and we should, I'm calling on his release and for the, him to have the opportunity to go through that process. Now, what I think is important about his case besides the unfairness, it sends a message that we see that immigration enforcement is not only about going after people who are violent criminals. In, the, in this case, he was a person who went far beyond what most people would do in helping to protect his community. It sends the wrong message that no matter how hard you've worked to be part of 
you know, our fabric of society. He's a long-term resident that still immigration um, enforcement policies will target whoever um, they can catch. And we're seeing that now most unfortunately in our courtrooms. These misguided policies has iced having enforcement um, protocols coming into the courtrooms of our, in our city, in our state. It's happened here in Brooklyn. They're going after residents um, who are here lawfully, who have been charged with low-level offenses, who have green cards. These are not just only violent criminals that ICE has been enforcing against. We've seen eight cases so far in Brooklyn this year. Now, to put, I mean, that sound like a lot of cases where there's been enforcement in Brooklyn, but in 2016, there were only 11 cases throughout the entire state that ICE came into the courtroom and made an arrest. In Brooklyn, just this year, eight. Now, these are people, some of them, who have not even been convicted of a crime. There was cases where people were going to be given an ACD, an action and contemplation of dismissal, which is basically six months and the case will be dismissed. There have been arrests in family court. There have been arrests in some of the problem-solving courts in the state, like our human trafficking court. That does not bode well for us uh, when our witnesses cannot feel safe to come to court. Um, and I'm going to call on ICE today to treat our courthouses as sensitive locations, the way we do with schools and hospitals and houses of worship. We're going to ask them not to include courtrooms in sweeps or other law enforcement actions, because that climate discourages people from coming to court. It's extremely dangerous, and it undermines the respect and trust of our judicial system. You know, I've been talking a little bit um, why I created the Immigrant Affairs Unit in Brooklyn, and I was concerned that immigrants would be pushed into the shadows. We have 2.6 million residents in Brooklyn, one third of them come from immigrant backgrounds. Half the households in Brooklyn speak another language other than English at home. Um, and we're seeing the fear in the community from people from all over the world. It's not, it's not a Latino problem, it's not an Asian problem or a Caribbean problem. They're families, immigrants from all over the world, and they're all fearful right now. And we've seen it on our law enforcement side because we have witnesses who are no longer willing to come forward. And I'll give you an example because I think it's, it's important to hear. There was a woman who, was, who came forward um, to our domestic violence office. And she said that she was having concerns um, with her son. She was an elder, and we have an elder abuse unit. And her son had allegedly been um, hitting her and taking advantage of her financially. She wanted help. And the district attorney's office and our court system is about providing people with protection and giving families help. And so we, we met with her, we spoke with her, and she said her son had a drug problem. And that what she was hoping is that we could get him into drug treatment so that the abuse would stop. And unfortunately, she's now reluctant to testify. You see, her son, he's here illegally, he has a green card, but she's afraid that as part of the process um, going forward in the court case, that he'll be subject to deportation and be ripped away from her and her family. These are the type of scenarios that are playing themselves out over and over again in, in DA's offices. I know definitely in any DA's office where there's a large immigrant community, um, these are fearful people. Um, they're also very vulnerable. And so we need to make sure that we can continue to get the trust and the cooperation of the witnesses and victims that we serve. Um, and that we must make sure that victims can actually get justice, that victims cannot be fearful to come forward in the criminal justice system. So again today, I'm going to ask that ICE refrain from arresting witnesses and victims. And if you think about it, our judges and our DAs issue subpoenas to witnesses to come to court to help 
testify in cases, and they could be subject to um, arrest. That really undermines a fundamental principle of what we're trying to accomplish in our court system, and it jeopardizes our public safety. So the promise that I'm going to make to the people of Brooklyn is simple. I'm going to continue to do the work that all of you need from your district attorney. I'm going to continue to make sure that Brooklyn continues to see the significant declines in violent crime, that our communities continue um, to thrive and enjoy prosperity and peace, but that we protect and treat everyone fairly and justly in our criminal justice system. And that just does not include only victims, but that includes defendants and immigrants and non-citizens, that we should be treating them with the respect and dignity that um, all persons deserve. I want to commend the, uh, the district attorneys who has done an outstanding job of filling some big shoes, carrying on the legacy of Ken Thompson, um, whose passing was a loss for Brooklyn, for the law enforcement community, and for all those of us who considered Ken a, a great friend and a valued colleague. But uh, District Attorney Gonzalez is continuing Ken's uh, uh, set of policies to understand that being a prosecutor is not just about racking up convictions. It is about pursuing justice and primarily keeping people safe. And under his leadership, the Brooklyn DA's office has been a real pioneer in showing how you can be both tough on crime and smart on crime, uh, bringing immigration lawyers into the office to help prosecutors understand the many thorny issues immigrants face. And again, as the district attorney said, if you're representing an area where one-third of the people were born somewhere else, you have to be able to make decisions based on what makes your community safer, what enables the police and prosecutors to do their jobs. And short-sighted, malevolent federal policies that would interfere with what our law enforcement officers want to do have to be opposed and have to be opposed vocally. And really, that's why I'm happy to be here today. I'm the lawyer for the people of all of the state of New York. And it's not quite as, uh, our immigrant population is not quite as dense as in Brooklyn, but statewide, people don't realize this, uh, almost 23% of the population in the entire state are people who were born in another country. So this is a, not just a borough of immigrants, this is a state of immigrants. And I have, I represent all, citizen and non-citizen alike, and public safety, I can tell you in every part of our state, depends on the participation of our citizens, of all New Yorkers from all walks of life and from all parts of the world. We need people to come forward as witnesses and victims because otherwise prosecutors and police simply cannot do their jobs. And that's why my office, the NYPD, and many other law enforcement agencies around the state have instituted sensible policies to ensure that all people feel safe talking with police and prosecutors. And that's why we are committed uh, and get engaged at this point on a, almost a weekly basis uh, to using every tool in our legal and constitutional toolbox to protect New Yorkers from overreach, bad public policies, or backsliding from Washington. And I add my voice to those who have called on ICE to stop arresting immigrants in courts immediately. It's cruel, it's self-defeating, and it clearly, in a place like Brooklyn, makes us less safe. Courthouses should be treated like churches, hospitals, or schools, uh, identified as sensitive locations where ICE enforcement is to be generally avoided. As the state's top law enforcement officer, I'm committed to ensuring equal justice for all. And I can tell you, without any equivocation or doubt, targeting immigrants in courthouses undermines justice. Fear of deportation stops witnesses from coming forward, stops victims from coming forward, and participating in and supporting our legal process. If ICE continues to arrest people in the heart of our justice system, immigrants will be less likely to come forward as witnesses, and they'll be less likely to report these other, uh, other matters that could relate to, to housing or employment. It hurts all the efforts of those of us who seek to ensure that the law is applied equally and fairly to all, and that police and prosecutors have the ability to go after the bad guys and effectively enforce the law. We need people to report crimes. We need people to come forward and cooperate. That's the, our system cannot function otherwise. And we've made tremendous progress in New York creating, uh, strengthening the bonds between neighborhoods and the police, the communities and the police. This is, this is an incredibly successful effort. I want to make sure that we understand that this is just the latest attempt 
by the Trump administration to use the criminal justice system as the tip of the spear for immigration enforcement. This is nothing short of an effort to continue to rip our families apart, to sow fear and terror in immigrant communities. And this is something the Trump administration is really trying to double down on. Think about the important role that courthouses play in our society. Courts are a central pillar of our community. It's the place that people go when they need to resolve issues of child custody. When you have an issue and you need to resolve it with your neighbor, or you have a housing problem, or you need to get an order of protection. And when you attack our courthouses, and make no mistake, this is an attack on our courthouses. When you attack our courthouses and you undermine them, you are weakening a central pillar of our community. For two decades, the Immigrant Defense Project has run a free hotline for immigrants and their families. And since January, there's one question that we get more and more. Is it safe to go to court? Is it safe to show up and defend myself against criminal charges? Is it safe to file a complaint against my landlord? Is it safe to seek visitation of my ch with my children? Is it safe to seek an order of protection? And the truth is, we can't really answer those questions. We can't say whether or not it's safe because we don't know when and where ICE will show up next. We don't know whether they'll be in family court or criminal court or in the human trafficking intervention court. We don't know if they'll be sitting in the back of the courtroom or lurking in the hallway. We don't know whether they'll be in plain clothes, whether they'll show a warrant, or whether they'll even say who they are when they come to snatch you from your family. When we can't tell immigrant New Yorkers that our courts are safe, there is something deeply wrong with our justice system. We need to stop ICE from using our courts to do their business. So today, the Immigrant Defense Project is very proud to stand with the district attorney and the attorney general, and we applaud them for taking a stand and saying enough is enough.